Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Mab'uthi rahmatan lil'alameen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na. Wanfa'na bima alamtana. Wazidna ilma wa alhiqna bi'ibadika as-salihin. Praise be to Allah, creator of the heavens and the earth, sustainer of all things. I express my love, my gratitude, and my reverence to Allah, the most kind. And I ask Allah to confer his peace and blessings upon the noble prophet Muhammad and his family and his companions and every prophet Allah sent before him until judgment day. Ayyuhal ikhwatu wal akhawat, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you with peace. I come in peace. May Allah Ta'ala make our intentions sincere, seeking to please Him alone and give us the full reward of this session, inshallah. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Masjid Muhammad, wal amilin alayhi. And Brother Imam Amin, hafizahullah, wa alaykum as Imam Amin, wa alaykum as salam, Imam Ibeel. And Holly Gordon, good to see you. And Fatima and Kashif, good to see you. And Safiya and Kamal, Rosalinda and Imari and Mary Booker. MashaAllah, we're going to have a full house today. Thank you all for being punctual. Thank you for being here. I'm grateful and I'm happy to see you, MashaAllah. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Sidi Zamir, good to see you. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Aqila. Aqila, good to see you, MashaAllah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Today, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to start a new chapter and I'm going to be with you for the next four days. So I'm excited and I'm happy, alhamdulillah, for the opportunity. May Allah Ta'ala keep us here and keep us safe. Unless Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala calls on me and then I have to go. And then you'll all remember, inshallah, that I was kind to you and you make dua for me. Otherwise, inshallah, I'm here tomorrow, the day after and the day after. And I'm here today by the grace of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. That's the truth. That's the truth. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah, sister Joanne. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Dimitri, it's good to see you. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So this book you see on the screen, that's the one I'm teaching. The Ladder to Success in Truly Loving Allah. Hadahu. Sulam al this one I'm on page 41 today for uh, yeah for the ones who are following in the book I am on page 41 <clears throat> the author may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him he said Barakallah fiq imari that's mighty kind of you subhanallah you are a dear sister is what you are Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for your noble emotions. Alhamdulillah. So let's see here. On page 41, and I'm also using the Arabic version because it has more details, don't forget. So, but yeah. Qal al-Mu'allifu rahimahullah. The author, may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him, he said, فصل في شروط الطهارة من وضوء وغسل وتيمم وفي أركان التيمم. He said new chapter, and he said this chapter talks about the conditions for purifications, including wudu, ghusl, and tayammum. Wudu being ablution, ghusl being a complete shower. Tayammum is dry wudu. You do it with soil and the like. And then he said, وَفِي أَرْكَانِ التَّيَمُّمْ Also, he's going to delve into the requisites of tayammum. Another word, how to make tayammum. He's going to talk about that too. وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ تَعْرِي مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ Good to see you. 
قال المؤلف شروط الطهارة. He starts off with شروط الطهارة. The conditions for purifications. When we talk about conditions, we're talking about things necessary for the validity of the act, but they precede the act itself. Yeah, they precede the act itself. Now, here in particular, concerning tahara purification, he said, "Shurut tahara the conditions for purifications, and he means for wudu, ghusl, and tayammum." What are the conditions, or you could call them the prerequisites, the prerequisites. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah, Kimberly, good to see you. And wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah, sister Joanne, also good to see you. Awwalan al-Islam, the first condition that has to be observed and satisfied is Islam. The person would have to be Muslim. فَلَا تَصِحُّ مِنْ كَافِرٍ So a person who is a non-Muslim, okay, his or her tahara will be invalid. If they do uh, make wudu, their wudu is invalid because they're non-Muslim to begin with. So anytime they want to do an act of worship, including prayer itself, uh, it's not valid. It's not valid. And there have been cases where some people who are very nice and very kind and sympathetic, there have been cases I've seen on YouTube where somebody would say, I'm traveling, you know, these vloggers, they, they tap into uh, a culture of the different country. They go there, they film it, they talk about it and everything. So at times you may have somebody who says, and I've seen people do that. I stayed without food all day today because it happened to be Ramadan in the country I'm in right now. And I, uh, to participate in their culture, I'm going to stay without food. <laughs> so... The, the intention of what they're trying to do is kind of nice because they're being sympathetic, they're trying to understand the culture and they want to participate and everything. And I'm quoting what they're saying. <clears throat> Only to find out later on that person said, but I had to drink water. I couldn't fast from water. So I stayed without food all day, but I had to drink water. <laughs> Well, their fasting would not have uh, been valid anyway, even if they didn't consume water. Because, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah, Sister Malika. Good to have you, mashallah. I'm happy to see you. I hope you're doing much better. Let me know how you are. So even if they didn't consume water, still their, their fasting would have been invalid because they're not Muslim. Although, although, we appreciate the fact that they want to get engaged, you know what I mean? They want to find out how we live, what we do. Maybe this acts as a muqaddima li-islamihim fi ma ba'd. This could act as a an intro, if you will, towards them becoming Muslim later on. You'll never know. You'll never know. So when people act like that in kindness, we don't dismiss altogether like, oh, you're a non-Muslim, your act is invalid. And no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Tell them, see, now you have an idea what it's like for us. We stay without food <laughs> for a while without water, this and that, but you know. But ideally in a situation like that, not that is gonna, Barakallah fiqh, Malik, alhamdulillah. Not that it's going to, um, it may or it may not make a difference. People don't travel overseas and abroad. And I digress, but it's relative and relevant. Because they're filming the country, showing you around and everything. That's fine. But ideally, it should have been that somebody explains to them that if you want to fast with us, 
because you're here in our country and you want to see what it's like and like that you should say like one of the conditions of fasting is for a person to be muslim because since they made that step forward think about what i'm saying right so you have this person who made this step said let me see what it is like to fast with the muslims right and they happen to be in um, jordan so they go with their friends you know they stay with that for them those friends of theirs should have told them about islam this is the point i want to get to those friends of theirs and i just picked jordan randomly although they go to all the arab and muslim countries in turkey especially somebody should have told them more about islam because you'll be surprised that on a subconscious level listen to me i'm a people's person and i know you'll be surprised how many of these people who are traveling overseas is because uh they're seeking an alternative to their lifestyle or they're seeking an alternative to their religion or to their culture some of them some of them because i'm not shunning anybody here but some of them have identity crisis you've seen that you've seen people who convert to buddhism and then to judaism and then to something else and they abandon christianity so they're out there soul searching right they're out there soul searching don't you think it would be very befitting at this point that whatever country they travel to somebody should have told them about islam la ilaha illallah i would have with a smile with a nice approach i would have i would have I say yeah since you asked and you want to see let me tell you something about islam do you have a minute or would you let me would you be willing to participate and let me share with you if they say yes i'm gonna lay it out in the kindest of ways wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah isa abdul zahir good to see you right so how did we get into this topic we are saying one of the conditions of purification is islam meaning if you want to purify yourself by making uh, wudu or ghusl or tayammum that can only be valid if you are a muslim already that's in the simplest terms that's how we get into this issue of fasting in the land because the acts of ibadahs the acts of worship are not valid when done by a kafir <clears throat> So it's necessary for the individual to be Muslim before they perform. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah amina. MashaAllah, good to see you. Thank you for joining. What about all the other acts of kindness? There are people out there who are mighty kind, very nice people, who are non-Muslim. They're very nice, they're kind, they have a nice attitude. They greet you when they come across you in the supermarket and they they're very charitable they mean well they don't steal they don't uh, you know they're very nice people and they're non muslim what about all those acts of kindness acts of kindness like surat al ma'un ma'un is to assist so one of its names is the acts of kindness what about that if the person was non-muslim and they do so many nice things to the community to the people to whoever to their relatives to their neighbors people are like that there is a lot of people who are like that they're non-muslim what becomes of those nice acts of theirs allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept those acts from them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts those acts of them in what sense he accepts in the sense that for being kind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind to them and these acts are not acts of ibadah differentiate between the two they're not out there performing prayers like muslims saying allahu akbar al-fatiha. they're not but they don't need a lot of money towards charities and towards organizations that assist those who are in need of food 
And when they go to the supermarket, there is those bags that you purchase for like ten dollars, and then the supermarket will give it to to people who are poor. They participate in all of that. So they're not acts of worship. They are acts of kindness. Differentiate between the two. Those acts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts from them because He gives them something back. That's why you see a lot of people out there who are non-Muslim and they have a nice life. They live well. They have a lot of their needs satisfied and so on. Because whatever they do in this world, Allah Ta'ala will reward them for their acts of kindness, but in this world. None of it extends into the hereafter. Whatever acts of goodness they do in this world, Allah compensates them for it in this world. In this world. Otherwise, if they were going to do an act of ibadah, Pray like a Muslim or fast like a Muslim or go to Hajj where they don't let them to Hajj. So you can scratch that. <laughs> Although lately I've seen people sneak in there who are not Muslims and they film. Shame, shame, shame. Anyway, so in this case, their acts they will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these acts require of the person to be a Muslim. So in this case, performing tahara, purification like wudu, ghusl, and tayammum are invalid and they're not accepted by um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this person, la tasihu minhu li annahu kafir. This person is a non-believer, so Allah will not accept him. Li annaha ibadatun badaniya li ghayri tarura. You see, this is uh, will end up being a physical act that's not necessary in his case, so long that this person is a non believer. This person is not of the people of worship because they're not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is an exception here where it comes to zakat. If the person wants to make zakat, then it is valid from this person. Because the difference here between paying zakat and making wudu, making wudu is an act that's physical of the body itself. Whereas zakat, you take money and you separate it from other monies and you pay it that it is zakat that's considered different because here it is material it is actual money also a woman who is a non-believer she may make ghusl also in order for her to allow for her husband to enjoy it. Because this is by necessity. So the first element we mentioned and we talked about is Islam. The person would have to be a Muslim in order for his acts of ibadah, worship to be valid. The person would have to be a Muslim. Al-Thani, the second one is at tamiz at tamiz we talked about it before, if you remember. At tamiz is discrimination. And I'm not talking about discriminating against a person or a group. Here. Discriminating as in like, he calls it here discernment. Yeah, that sounds even better. Yani, al-mukhatab yafhamu al-kalam idha khutiba fi. So you have a person who's relatively young, but if you address them, they understand you. If you talk to them, they understand you. So that person would have to be a Muslim and at least, at least would have to be a Mumayyiz, okay? Because beyond Tamiz, that is to say before a person becomes uh, able to understand a conversation or to perform Istinja to purify oneself, um, independently by themselves, 
If it's prior to that, this person is what, three years old? Now the lot of Sahul ibadah to me. This person is a uh, worship is not accepted. They're too young. They're too young. Katufli, like if, if somebody is still a child, you know. Wamajnoon, also when there is no tamiz, could also be a case of madness where the person is mad, as in like they have an absence of uh, reason. Because such an individual also is not mu'ahal, is not ready to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَمَّا تَمَامُ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ سَبْعُ سِنِينَ Wait. وَأَمَّا تَمَامُ سَبْعِ سِنِينَ فَلَيْسَ بِشَرْ So it's not necessary that the person would have to be seven years old and above. It's not so cut in stone. They would have to be at least mumayyiz. Some kids, they are so smart. You know, uh, before seven, they're mumayyiz, but before seven, but they're so smart. MashaAllah, you'll be surprised. So the second thing is discernment. So we mentioned Islam and we mentioned discernment. So as far as Islam, the person who wants to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do any acts of worship would have to be a Muslim would have to be Muslim. If they do acts of kindness, which many of them do, alhamdulillah, otherwise the world would be much worse <laughs> if they weren't. Then, you know, Allah Ta'ala compensates them for whatever they do. They don't get anything on the day of judgment, however. Whatever they do to be deserving of reward, Allah Ta'ala compensates them for it here. Now, <clears throat> The second thing is discernment, and we said that you can't be uh, demanding acts of worship of somebody who is a child. You do that after 10 years, after they become at the age of 10 years. Discernment. The third element we have to take into consideration. This is on page 41 of this book. 41. The third one is. عدم المانع من وصول الماء إلى المغسول. You could not have any substance on the organ to be washed or wiped in the event of tayammum, right? That prevents the water from reaching the skin. You can't have anything on your organ, such as the the hand and the forearm, that prevents the water from reaching the organ to be washed. If it was above and beyond over here and you're making wudu, you're okay. Because you only wash up to here, see? أي أول ممسوح كشمع وعين حبر وحنا وخلاف بخلاف مجرد للونهما بحيث لا يتحلل بالحد مثلا شيء. طيب. So the other day, wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah haja stacy thank you for joining good to see you the other day somebody asked me like what if you can't remove something and in my naivete i didn't understand what he meant i think it was hash tamir <laughs> so why wouldn't you be able to remove it and then a sister answered and said shape that could be a tattoo <laughs> i was like oh yeah see my mind didn't go there subhanallah my mind didn't go there. So, alhamdulillah, I understand. Which in this case, if a person has a tattoo, like they, they had this tattoo before they became Muslim, all right? They've had it for a while. And then they became Muslim. Can they still make wudu and ghusl and so on? Yes. Because at this point, this ink has seeped into the skin. It's not forming a layer on top of the skin. It's part of the skin. The only way you know it's this because of the colors, right? But it's in the skin, so it doesn't prevent the water from reaching the skin. So to reiterate that and emphasize that wudu is valid. Although in Islam we don't do tattoos. We don't do tattoos. Okay. So now we're talking about the water should not have, there should not be any barrier that prevents the water from reaching the organ that needs to be washed or wiped. Washed in the event you're making wudu. 
wiped in the event you are making tayammum. Now, number three is as sayalan. As sayalan, it means the water must be flowing. The water must be flowing, such as if you dropped it, it would run. You don't drop it like that and it stays right there. No, it moves. Say a land. And you know how that's going to happen because you're pouring a little bit of water. It's not like you're making, dropping one drop at a time. You take water and you're, you're washing with it. It's going to have to run. So that's a condition of Tahara. The water you're using must be running. If a person took water and wiped the organ with it instead of washing, so he made it moist or wet, that's not sufficient. That's not sufficient to make tahara that way. And it's not, in fact, called ghusl. It's not. Ghusl washing means the water should be flowing, should be running. <clears throat> if a person is not able To make wudu, then they make tayammum. That's a different kind of purification. It's temporary, and we're going to get into that later. Now you get into the most detailed one of these, and that is the water must be pure in itself, purifying to you. It has to be pure in itself, purifying to you. Let me have some coffee. Hold on. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أن يكون الماء مطهرا water has to be pure in itself purifying to others فيكون الماء طاهرا إذا لم يتنجس how is water usually pure if it does not have any filth in it simple water regular water it's pure whether it's from your faucet or from a lake or from a pond from a river from the sea from the ocean it's all good from a waterfall it's all good that's in general we haven't gotten into the details but generally water is pure H2O. <laughs> H2O. It's all good. Alhamdulillah. Tayyip. Ay fi nafs al amr. Falaw tawadda a mathalan min ma'an ya'taqid tuhuriyatahu. Thumma ba'ana adamuha. Lam yasuh wudu. Sheikh said, if you have a case where somebody came across water and he thought it was pure, tahir, and he went and made wudu with it, he or she, and only to find out later on that it's not pure. Here, his wudu would be invalid. So whatever he did with that wudu, he's going to have to repeat. If he used his wudu to pray zuhur, he's going to have to remake his wudu and re-pray zuhur all over. Now, now you have water, like let's say in a, in a container. Somebody came and made wudu with it. Left. Uh, if somebody else came and said, can I use this water? Somebody should tell him no, because somebody already used it to make wudu with. That doesn't make it najis. It's still tired because why would it be najis? Why would it be filthy? It's not. It's not like somebody urinated or defecated. And, no, it's tired, but it's been used by somebody already to make wudu with. So you're not allowed to reuse it a second time. That you are not allowed to do. كما ولا يستصح الطهارة بالمتغير تغيرا كثيرا بالطاهر الخليط الذي يستغني الماء عنه. Also, you're not allowed to make wudu or tahara 
with any water that's mixed with something that is tile also as well, and they got mixed together. Where they're not mixed naturally. These two elements came together not naturally. For example, T. T is water mixed. If you take Hufna in a shy, if you take a handful or a little less from shy, you've seen when it's dried and it looked black. It's different from the one we buy here in America in the supermarket. We have both. If you take it and you dump it in there after the water boiled and then you mix it with it. Here you have the water changed completely. <clears throat> It changed completely. You could tell it's not. So if somebody came and told you, what's this? Not that somebody will, but obvious, unless they don't know. Suppose somebody came to you and said, what is this? And you say tea. You're not going to say it's water mixed with tea. خلص. That that name water is gone. It's tea by now. So tea in itself is tahir. It's pure. Water itself is tahir, pure. Put the two together, you can't make a kudu with them. You can't make kudu with shai, with tea. See that? Because this kind of mixing is preventable. This kind of mixing is preventable. You can avoid mixing them if you choose to, right? Because there you have cases where the water changes and you can't prevent it from mixing with other material that changed its characteristic characteristics. You can. And we're gonna get into that. Like uh, you know Ma'ul Bahr. The water of the sea is salty. It's wicked salty, right? You can't prevent these two from mixing. It it is what it is. So that you can make wudu with it, and we're going to get to it in a minute. But to give you an idea. هَذَا بِأَنْ لَا يَسْلُبَ إِسْمَهُ بِمُخَالَطَةِ طَاهِرٍ يَسْتَغْنِي الْمَاءُ عَنْهُ Because the idea here, the criterion here, what's going to make a difference here is that the water mixed with something where the name of the water is no longer called water, it's called something else, and it mixed with a component, you could have prevented it from mixing with it in the first place. You could have. That doesn't imply you shouldn't make tea when we say prevent it. No, no, we're talking like, is it doable? Is it doable? Can you prevent the tea from mixing with water? Or you pour concentrated orange juice uh, <laughs> inside a... A big container of glass water. Mm, that sounds good about now, by the way. So yeah, you mix it and now you have like orange juice. Summertime and you're having some lemonade or some orange juice or I don't know. So yeah. In this case, you can't use this to make wudu. You, you got the idea. Sheikh Yahya Hafizullah taught you all this. You already know. But it's good to hear it again. That way it's well established in our mind. When you come across a river, okay, and when I lived in Massachusetts and I used to go hiking a lot because there's a lot of forests out there. So um, I've seen this, and I've seen this with my own eyes. When you come across rivers and the river's water would have changed color because it's mixed with uh, different plants and herbs and a log of a tree may have fallen in the water and over the years deteriorated. So it mixed with the water and changed its characteristics. Is it still called water though? Yes. Like Ma'ul Bahar, the water of the sea. What do you call it? You don't call it something else. You still call it water. Similarly, this one, you come across a river where... Um, the water, it looks green, right? Or if it came from up the mountains and it was moving fast, 
it pulls a lot of soil with it, becomes a strong current. Now the water is brown, right? Different cases. Can you make wudu with it? Yes. Because you can't prevent it from mixing with whatever material changed its, its characteristics. So it's still considered water, it's still considered tahir, it's still considered tahur. You can make wudu and ghusl with it. La ilaha illallah. Details, 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 details. And then some more details. <laughs> and there's there's khilaf too. Now I'm giving it to you according to Shafi'i radiallahu ta'ala. Don't forget. And I'm not going to get into something somebody else because, with all due respect, because it will only make it more complicated. And we don't want to complicate things. We want to simplify, simplify, simplify. <clears throat> if somebody threw something on in a river purposely <clears throat> that changed the characteristic of the water that's preventable and that's a different case scenario here you can't use the water to make a rule you cannot use the water to make wudu if somebody did it on purpose. Now, it, it gets worse than that. And that's different, but it's related. Well, you have companies, factories that dump toxic waste in the water. And usually, this is water that people use and they consume to drink, cook with, wash their dishes and their laundry and clean themselves and for domestic usage of all sorts. And then you have an evil company who dumps their toxic waste in the water. So in this case, it's so harmful. And people may get cancer from it and they die or it may cause them physical defect mentally or otherwise all kinds of physical defects because they are inconsiderate and they are money hungry and they don't care what happens to people they don't care <clears throat> remember aaron brokovich case in point like that or more recently, alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah, Faisul, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. On more recently, and by recently, I mean like now it's still going on, but it has been going on for years and nobody did anything about it. You have a town in Michigan called Flint, Flint, Michigan. Uh, the water there, the pipes that get the water to this little town are all rusted and old and poisoned because they're just so deteriorated. And people get sick from drinking this water. And it's been going on for years. And they complained to the government and they took uh, their, their issue to the court and nobody helped them. I digress, but it's relative. These things do happen. So the people in Flint, Michigan, have been suffering for years because the water there is not drinkable, it's not usable. Here we're talking on a lesser level. We're not talking about toxic water. We're talking about whether this water, you could use it to make purification with or if you cannot. And we're talking about the details. But did you hear the last thing I said? That's why this topic came up. If somebody threw something in the water that changed the characteristics of the water, <clears throat> this water you can no longer use it to make wudu with or tahara purification because that was preventable in the, per in the first place. Whereas if it's the kind of mixture that happened in nature because of the water is gushing and rushing so fast 
it pulled with it a lot of mud and soil, mashallah. So you look at it and the color is red or uh, or uh, brown, you know, it's muddy. It's still considered pure. It's still considered the kind that you can use to purify yourself with. So it's pure in itself and you can use it to purify yourself with it in this case. See, so the criterion here is to determine whether you can use it or not to make purification with is whether the mixture of this water with something else can be preventable or not. <clears throat> Usually, when water is mixed with something until no longer so much so until no longer it's called water that's a dead giveaway right there that's a dead giveaway you're gonna know you can't use it because if it's no longer called water it's called something else like orange juice or tea or coffee or i don't know so like hot chocolate i don't know then you know you're not gonna make with it. nobody's gonna make with, it with hot chocolate <laughs> Drink it on your cold. Don't make it with it. So you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, once the name of the water is taken away from it such that it's no longer called water, <clears throat> then that's, like I said, a dead giveaway that you cannot use that water to make purification. Now, you have a case scenario also where something filthy may fall into the water, okay? Here, the quantity of, water, of the water and whether the water changed or not are the two main factors that would determine what you're going to do with that water. What kind of quantity are we looking at? How much water? And what's the condition of the water? Did it change because of this something that's not just that fell in it or not? Did it or did it not? قال المؤلف رحمه الله أي وألا يتغير الماء بنجس That water should not be changed by something filthy that came across it. متصل به that, that the water connected with even if this happened to be two qillas or more and Sheikh Yahya Hafizahullah went over this and he told me and I'll reiterate you're looking at two barrels of water that's qillat if the quantity of the water is two barrels or more or two barrels or less so that's what you're going to use to determine <coughs> متصل به ولو قلتين فأكثر إذن في تستو بارز أون مور فإذا تغير الماء بذلك فإنه نجس إذن في تز مور ذن تو بارز بيك كوانتيتي and yet the water changed and you know that thing that fell in it is نجس is filthy the water is considered filthy in this case ولو تغير يسيرا even if the change is not drastic it's a modest change. It changed a little bit, but you can see it's not the same. You can no longer use it. It's considered nudges. <coughs> no. وَإِنْ كَانَ الْمَاءُ دُونَ الْقِلَّتَيْنِ زِيد أَلَّا يُلَاقِيهِ نَجِسٌ غَيْرُ مَعْفُونَ عَنْهِ If the case here is where the water is less than two barrels and something filthy came across it and it's the type of filth that you cannot be excused from what are you going to do? Something fell in the water and it's um, like if you have a mouse that fell in the water and it's dead it happens because 
I know people who lived um, somewhere and uh, they they have their kitchen they don't actually have a kitchen this is in a third world country they had like a barrel I just remember this one barrel of water and there is a river that goes by and there's a water that comes and pours into this barrel so you have a case scenario like that it happens it's real people live like that uh they don't have a lot of water so you have to be very careful what what falls into this water if anything and how you deal with it <clears throat> so if you have a case where like flies fell into it these are not animals that bleed per se as i'm a foreman this is excused but what you do is you you add more water to it to get it to be more than two barrels more than two barrels does he do feed <clears throat> now certain animals we consider tahir so if they drink from this water, we don't think that it makes it um, nudges. Like according to some scholars, if a cat came and drank from the water of where you have it, like I mentioned in the story overseas, and in this case, you know, lapped at some of this water, the cat drank from it and then walked away. It's okay. <clears throat> The saliva of the cat here is tired, according to some scholars. Some back to the fur who are talking about one particular madhab here. Okay. Tayyip. The water also could, yeah, thank you, right? The water also could not have been used to Raf um, al Hadath. <clears throat> if you have an amount of water that's less than two barrels and somebody used it to make ghusl with you can no longer use it yourself Some people may have a small quantity of water and they say, I'm going to use this to make wudu to go to Jumu'ah today. That's considered ma' mustamal. This is water that's been used already. You can't use it again. Especially, of course, especially, especially, and that goes without saying, but we will say it for its necessity here. <laughs> you have to say it. But it goes without saying. If somebody made this tinja with that water, why? Wash themselves after going to the bathroom. That's definitely a no. You cannot use that water to make tahara with because it was used to remove najasa. <clears throat> now, if a person is harmed by water, and I want you to know something, people who suffer from this, that's a tough case. It's devastating. For those who get harmed by water, this is bala'um min Allahi azim. This is a, a calamity that's a big deal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inflict somebody with. So, if they are harmed by water, chances are, and water is the most natural thing to put on your body. I mean, our bodies are made of 70% of water, right? And yet you cannot use water. Some people are harmed by water, subhanAllah. That's a problem. That's a calamity. Alhamdulillah, we don't have this problem. Because you could imagine that so many other things are going to be harmful to this person. If water doesn't work. What are they going to use? <clears throat> In this case, where truly somebody is harmed by the usage of water, then this person will have to make tayammum. 
dry wudu they have to make the yamum dry wudu instead of washing regular wudu you wash right? and uh, now you can't use one what are you gonna do you're gonna make the yamum. you're gonna do dry wudu la ilaha illallah It can be a case scenario where it's inconvenient though, because some people, they don't understand these things. They do and they don't. They know they're not supposed to do it this way, <clears throat> but they don't understand the risk of doing it. Somebody cannot make wudu, is what I'm saying. Uh, somebody who cannot make wudu because they're harmed by water, they resort to making tayammu. But some people, yahtalun, some people are mischievous. They may make one claim where it's not real. And they try to find loopholes in the deen to do things a certain way. Yani Rish, I'm talking about cheating here, basically. You cannot cheat. Either either water is harmful to you or it's not. Man kana yadurruhu al-ma'u tayammama. Ba'da dukhul al a person who cannot make wudu will have to resort to yamam, to tayammum, dry wudu, after the time of the prayer had set in. So there is an alternative to making wudu. What's it called? Tayammum. It's called tayammum. And this person will go and make tayammum after the time of the prayer has settled in already. So if Zohar comes in at 12.31, let's say they go at 12.40 and they make tayammum. That tayammum is valid. If Zohar time comes in at 12.31 and they said, let me make tayammum in preparation for Zohar and they do tayammum before Zohar set in like at 12.20, that's invalid. It has to be after the time for prayer had set in. Also, after this person has taken care of any istinja that's necessary. If they need to, like they use the bathroom and they need to make uh, istinja, they will take care of that, of course, before making tayammum as well. <clears throat> When you're about to make tayammum, if you're out in the prairies, because you gotta remember, now we have convenience. We live in houses with water, uh, heated water, cold water, prayer rugs, compasses to determine the direction of the qibla, all of that. For the longest time, like right now, we are in the year 1443 Hijri, 1443. For the longest time, people traveled and they didn't necessarily have facilities like we do and the amenities like we do. So they had to be out in the prairies. So a lot of times they made this tinja like we talked about the other day uh, with stones and things they found out there, right? And they made tayammum in the desert. They made tayammum in the desert. Or in the prairies, let's put it that way. Or in the prairies, yeah? One of the things you have to take into account before you get to this point, first of all, if you use the bathroom, you have to remove any energies, all right? And the time of the prayer would have had to set in first. The time for the prayer would have had to set in first. Also, you have to determine which way the qibla is. Subhanallah, Malika. It's rough out there, I tell you. May Allah help these people. May Allah help them. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? I, I see what you're saying, Malika, because I was just talking about facilities, amenities, the convenience and all. And I'm thinking like from up until recently, that's how people lived. And now you're saying like you got malaria in Nigeria. So this is now, like in this day and in this age, right? One of the things you have to take into account, you have to know the direction of the Qibla. <clears throat> You have to make ijtihad exert an individual effort on your part to determine where the Qibla is from where you are. Qibla is the direction that will lead you to where the Kaaba is. Kaaba being the cubicle black building in Mecca. The people, they circumambulate around it, right? So you have to make ishtihad and figure out which way the Qibla is. You do make your tayammum with soil. You make your tayammum with soil. That's not mixed with anything else. Khals, bituraban khalis in tahur. So you will make your tayammum with soil that's pure, that's not mixed with anything else. All right, and it has to be dry soil. Lahu gubar. Gubar is uh, dust. So when you hit it, you get your hands dusty. It has to be the kind that produces dust. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Hajj Tamir. Ma sha Allah. Good to see you. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa sallallahu ala rasulillah. So this soil has to be dry that it produces dust and it has to be pure. It's not edges, it's not filthy. And it has to be soil, not anything else. And it can't be mixed with anything else. Like, there's sometimes people use soil to build with, where it starts to look and feel like cement. Like that kind. The kind that's pure, dusty, uh, it is soil. You hit it like that, you get dust on your hands. You're ready to make tayammum. See? Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah Abdul Batin Abdul Haq. Good to see you. <coughs> making tayammum, unlike making wudu, it's involving less, less limbs and organs. Less, a lot less. All you have to do is, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hit the soil with the palms of your hands. Now you got dust. Okay? <clears throat> you take that dust and you wipe your face with it. And we determined, had al wajh before, we determined the limits of the face, that it is from where the hair grows normally, to the chin and from the ear to the ear, yeah? This is the limits of the face. So you do that. The second time, you hit it like that. You hit the soil. You take the soil. You get it to go between your fingers and everything. And you cover your entire hands with it. You do one arm. And then you do the second arm with the other hand. Whatever appears in your face has to be white. Like if your mouth is closed like this. See, you can still see some of my lips. Whatever part is apparent, even with your mouth closed, that has to be included in tayam. Okay. <clears throat> So 
So you hit the soil like this twice, and then you do your face, and then you do it again, and you cover, in this case, your hand and forearm. What's not involved in here is your hair, your hair, your head, and your feet. You don't have to do anything with those. <clears throat> and when you uh, make tayammum, you do it with the intention that you want to make tayammum for the sake of Allah. Always you do your ibadah for the sake of Allah. And wanting to render your prayer permissible. Wanting to render your prayer permissible. So in the event where there is no water to be used or the person is harmed by water, <clears throat> then this person may make tayammum instead. And you have to do it for each prayer separately. So if you made tayammum, you go, you go pray dhuhr with it. When asr comes and it sets in once again, you make tayammum for asr. You pray Asr with it. <clears throat> Each prayer requires a special tayammum. So you can't use the same tayammum for more than one prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me, Afwan. Sorry, I'm sick. Because of the allergy. And allergens in the air and the dust. and the... God help me. Okay. So... So like we said, two things call for tayammum. If the person cannot find water, they go a certain distance each way or they go up on a hill and they look around, they don't see any water. They go and look in the other directions, they don't see any water. And they don't have enough water to sustain themselves and make wudu with. So your life in this case takes precedence, it's very important. So you use the water you have to drink as necessary. And you use the soil Allah Ta'ala made available to you to make tayammum with. See? And this reminds me of the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has rendered the entire planet as my masjid. I can pray anywhere. Allah. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah Muhammad Abdul Hakim. So that's one case scenario when you cannot find water, you are allowed to make tayammum. The second one is if the water is harmful to you, then you are allowed to make tayammum. <coughs> are there other cases? Yeah. Yeah, there are other cases. Like I said, in the past, when they lived like they did, and many people still live like that today, uh, if you have water, wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah samir rifai ahna wa sahna. If you have water, but there is an, a beast that stands between you and the water. إذا وجدت ماء إذا وجدت ماء وكان بينك وبين الماء سبع If you find water but between you and that water there is a beast like a lion right or a pride of lions أسرة من الأسود تمنعك من وصول الماء في هذه الحال جاز لك التيمم So if you have a pride of lions you want to go make wudu and you find lions in the way. They will consume you. <laughs> you can't go there. La ilaha illallah. What are you going to do in this case? You make tayammum. Jaza laka fi hadhi al-halati tayammum. It's permissible for you to make tayammum. So there are other um, legitimate excuses. A'zaar shari'iyya maqbula. These are legitimate excuses that are acceptable in our deen in Islam. MashaAllah, you see. 
<clears throat> now, now as far as the usage of the soil, استعمال التراب للتيمم قد يكون لون التراب مختلف عن المعهود كي يكون أبيضا أو أسمرا أو أو بين هذا وذاك. So the soil It's not particular to any color. It could be dark soil. Like the soil in Hawaii is very dark because it's volcanic, right? And that's soil. And I'm not talking about the sand on the beach. I'm talking inland. That is some serious soil, subhanAllah. It's very fertile too. Its color is dark. Some other types of soil have a lighter color. They tend to be more like mud, reddish. It's also turab. Launuhu ahmar. Qad la yakunu aswadan. It may not necessarily be black. It may be red or brown or the like. As long as if it is soil, it's dry and it produces dust when you hit it. Lahu ghubar. Lahu ghubar. Hada yujzi'u tayammum. You can make tayammum with that one. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have here of these details. <clears throat> so you hit the soil, you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. You hit the soil. <laughs> Malika, that would be wild. Somebody did that. What's up? No way. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <laughs> Not like the dust of the furniture. Akid la. Akid la. For sure, no. <laughs> ya Allah, Ya Allah. We're talking about soil here, but yeah. It's good that you mention stuff like that, as silly as it may sound, because you'll be surprised what people will do, man. For whatever reason, maybe they're stupid, maybe they're just ignorant, maybe uh, they think it's more convenient. I mean, I don't know. La ilaha illallah, right? So you hit it once. Tadrubu turawa hakaza bika fake. You say, I now intend to make tayammum nawaitu tayammum al istibahat is salat. I now intend to make tayammum to render my prayer permissible. You do the wajah. You go the second time, and then you do the hands and the forearms of Ilan Marafiq. With one hand, you do one, and with the other hand, you do the other. That's it. The head is not involved, the feet are not involved. And while you do that, you say, Biniyati istibahati for this salat. So, why did we say with the intention to render the prayer permissible? Because with wudu in Arabic, you could say, I now intend to make wudu biniyati rafa al hadath to elevate and eliminate the event. What event? The fact that you used the, ba the bathroom. Istamal al hammam. Taqun nawait wudu al istibahati al salat. Right? To remove the hadath. To eliminate the fact that I am unable to pray because I had to use the bathroom. So that's eliminated by me making wudu right now. You can't use that ibarah, that expression on making tayyam. You don't say li al hadath. You say istibahat al salat. I now intend to make tayyam to render my prayer permissible. That's why. Istibahat fard al salat. Yeah. Now. <clears throat> what if it is the type of prayer that's like janazah? What if you are talking about a funeral prayer? Hal yumkin lishaksi tayammum 
بأدائي صلاة الجنازة الإجابة نعم يجوز Is it permissible for somebody to make tayammum so they can pray funeral on somebody? Yes, the answer is yes. Can they use that tayammum to pray the sunnah of the fard they just prayed? Yes. Limited to that. So if you pray dhuhr and you want to pray two rakahs after, you can. As we mentioned earlier, I'll drift a little bit. I'll become a drifter here. <laughs> As we mentioned earlier, one cannot help but think how fortunate we are. La Buddha mina tafakuri huna bi ni'amillahi alayna jalla wa ala. So many bounties Allah blessed us with. Right off the bat, right off of the bat, <clears throat> thank you, Amina. The fact that we're not harmed by water. You could only imagine these people, they can't take showers, and if they do, not so often, right? It becomes very inconvenient if you're not able to use water because it harms you physically. And we don't have that issue. So we have to account for that as a great blessing from Allah. It's a great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that water does not harm us. Right? So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. The second one I want to reiterate is the fact that we have water available all the time. Pretty much, right? And we can use it. And we can use it. And water is, as Allah said in the Quran, the essence for life. Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَن Allah Ta'ala descends water from the sky and then what happens? Sometimes he says, Nuhi bihi al-arda ba'da mawtiha. That Allah revives the land after, um, after uh, it had been dead. It's dead and Allah makes it alive. And in that he set an example for the kafirun who don't believe in Al-Ba'ath. Tarabah Allah bihi mathalan lillazina la yu'minuna bil-ba'ath ba'da al-mawt. Bi-inzali al-matar min al-samaa qala linuhiyya bihi al-ard. Allah descends water from the sky with which he renders the lands which are arid and dead and dry and cracked. You've seen them. Ya Allah, it rains like in the Serengeti, right? In Africa, it's so beautiful. And all these animals that are walking on dust for an entire season, and then they show you the rain comes, then, you know, you hear the elephants making all these sounds, rejoicing, and the animals come to where the water is, and the river flow, the rivers flow, the plants are everywhere. All of a sudden, what used to be yellow and beige, now it's all green. Water is essential to life. Allah made from the water all things that are alive. You see? And then Malika, you said about the story of the man. Yes. Yes. So there was this man who was harmed by water. So he had hurt his head and he had big... Uh, wound in his head and he was traveling with his companions and then uh, he said i don't think i should use water because of the wound in my head may allah protect me and then they said to him no you can't make the him we have to use water 
so the poor guy he <laughs> he did the, the response and then he used water and it ended up killing him he died because he used water right malika and then when they got to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi they told him the story and he made dua on them the prophet made dua on them he said may allah kill them because they gave him the wrong fatwa it cost the man his life so once again thank you for mentioning that that's real some people are like that you can't i mean in this case he had a wound in his hand and you know but still nonetheless some people they can't use water. I don't know. They have some skin diseases or ailments or who knows. So I wanted to mention that, like how fortunate we are to have water at our uh, disposal all the time. But beware, beware that before too long, listen to what I'm telling you, before too long from now, Water is going to become the most precious commodity on the planet. Not gold, not silver, not oil. I mean petroleum and gas and gasoline. No, it's going to be water. It's going to be water. There is so much drought around the planet right now. I saw a man in Pakistan yesterday who was sitting there crying. He lost 70 cows uh, over two weeks, 15 days, he said. And because it hasn't rained in years. And I saw him with some people in one instant where the cow fell and then they were splashing it with water trying to keep it alive and it didn't survive. And I also told you in Somalia, in the African horn where Somalia is, in Somali land, it hasn't rained there in three years, three years. We see them, they take the herd out in the camels to see if there's no food, there is no water, and their animals are dying by the thousands. And this is their fortune. This is their fortune. On average, on average, that's like at the minimum. Anywhere, a camel will cost you at least $1,500, up to $100,000. So for many of these people, this is their livelihood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ibtalahum, may Allah ease their pain and elevate his calamity off of them. So water is very essential to our lives. Now that we mentioned that, let's use it in moderation. If we're going to make wudu, be considered. Even if we have plenty of like the way the rule usually it works whatever town you live in you pay 84 dollars a month or something like that and they give you like 3500 gallons per month sometimes you don't use that much all right some people use more the idea is uh no matter what your water bill is use it in moderation and in that you seek to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are not mubadzir. You are not a person who spends excessively. Excessively. Tatfif, like Allah said, Wailun lil mutaffifin. Woe unto those who are extremists. <coughs> I don't know the answer to that, Malik. I haven't heard or I haven't thought about it in so long. I'll look it up for you. So you see what I mean? Like we'll use the water in moderation, even though we can afford to use a lot of it. Please consider that. Because like I said, they allow you so much. And even if you use more than what's allowed, they'll give it to you, but they'll charge you extra. But why are we gonna go use 4,000 gallons of water per month if we could, I don't know how much we use, but like if you can get away with, let's say a thousand or 1200, because water, uh, 
planet wise and globally it gets recycled Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know wherever it goes then it ends up in the ocean and then by the grace of Allah it evaporates and becomes Sahab and the angels take it from you know and turn it into clouds and then it it moves it to a piece of land and then it rains so there is a cycle there from what we saw so it's nice not to use it excessively even if you're brushing your teeth don't keep the faucet running all the while you're sitting there looking at yourself in the mirror spacing out going at it yalla 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 and then two three four gallons just went down the drain right and you're like oh yeah i need to finish and then you rinse your toothbrush and your mouth and then you walk and by then you've wasted like three four five gallons who does that what your mouth what your toothbrush you know do what you need to do close it brush your teeth and when you're ready to rinse turn it back on this is good behavior this teach you to be moderate in everything in everything in life moderation is key <clears throat> You don't use too much salt on your food and don't pour salt on your food until you tasted it first to see if it needs it or if it doesn't after it's been put on the table many people do that as soon as the plate is put they grab the salt and the pepper and they start pouring <laughs> taste it first taste it first to see if it needs it you may end up having too much salt in your food now what are you gonna do go wash it off Give me a break. It sounds silly and it sounds funny, but it's life. And we use things in moderation. Hatta, remember, even in the acts of Ibadah, the acts of worship, remember what the scholars said. A moderate amount of worship that's continuous is better than a great amount of worship that gets interrupted because somebody got exhausted or the like see moderation is key we have to be moderate in everything in life including the usage of water including the usage of water you know those people i was telling you about in flint michigan it's hard to break and then uh, that in america there are towns like that who live who are abandoned by the society and the government and the <clears throat> those who are in charge and even though they addressed the authority with the issue for so long they keep getting promises and the issue was never fixed many many of those people left this town and they traveled somewhere else because they, they just can't live there see that's in, in our backyard so to speak that's up in michigan see may allah ta'ala ease their pain also and help them out because we wish well for everybody. Insha'Allah, I will stop here today and come back and see you tomorrow. Let me make dua for you. Please pardon my shortcomings sometimes. <clears throat> I don't know. None of us is perfect, especially me. So anything I say or do the wrong way, I mean no harm and you know me. I mean no harm, Allah Kareem, Allah Kareem. Oh Allah, oh Allah, bless our gathering here today and make us disperse in peace and in protection from any sin and from any harm. Oh Allah, we ask you guidance, piety, chastity, and wealth. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant each one of us an honest tongue and a humbled and a penitent heart, righteous deeds, useful knowledge, Firm belief, pure faith, and blessed sustenance, and plenty of it. Oh Allah, you are the most majestic and the most given. And we recognize that. Thank you, Lord, for all that we have. Thank you. Oh Allah, grant glory to Islam and grant support and unity to Islam and the Muslims. Oh Allah, grant us protection and security in our homelands. Oh Allah, grant us long lasting safety and stability in our homelands. And grant us always to be truthful in everything that we say and do. Oh Allah, 
make us among those who remember you night and day and seek your forgiveness at evening and dawn. Oh Allah, bestow upon us blessings from the sky and bring us bounties from the earth and bless our livelihood whichever way we turn. You are the most majestic, the most given. We recognize that, we recognize that. Oh Allah, give us the best of this world and the best of the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. Let's say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab al See, I just translated it, but it's beautiful, mashallah. Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will be among the losers. Inshallah, we will never be, will always be triumphant, inshallah, in this world and in the next. Oh Allah, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us from yourself mercy. Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan inna ka anta al-wahab. See, same thing. Oh Allah, forgive the belief in men and women, those who passed away and those who are alive, and cure those among us who are sick, including me. Oh Allah Ta'ala, I ask you to relieve us of all of our ailments and protect us from any kind of harm coming from anywhere. May Allah Ta'ala spread His peace across the entire planet. And may Allah guide people to Islam in groups and groups. Afwaja. See? So, Allah Ta'ala, may He make us among those who are reason for those people to be guided. That being said, you have got to share this session with other people to spread the knowledge around the place and propagate the truth and teach people how to make tahara and wudu and all these beautiful good things. And at the last thing, the last thing I would say is support this platform. Barakallah fikum any which way you can. <laughs> Malika, thanks for sharing that. That is so funny. Even Annie was recognized you should do you shouldn't do that. Subhanallah, there you have it. Barakallah fikum. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll come back and see you tomorrow at the same time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.